Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing pretty good. I'm doing great. So today we're gonna to be doing one of my favorites. We're gonna mix some die stabilized, I need to turn that down, <laughs> die stabilized wood, as well as some aluminum honeycomb chunks. Um, not like the full sheets, but just little bits of it. I, I really like that kind of mixture. So uh, let me switch to the overhead view. Looks like we already got a couple of uh, uh, super chats in. Um, so this is going to be a good one. We're going to have two batches, and so we're going to need lots of colors. So um, super chats, you guys get to pick colors. So Dave, um, I think you got kind of messed up on the on the different streams. Sorry about that, but um, you're already in. So let me know what color you want, Dave. Um, so let me switch to the overhead view, and I'll show you what is going on right now. Got a couple of things happening. Check these out. Look at these chunks. Oh man, so I die stabilized these quite a while ago. This was like a big brick and I just kind of cut it up. Uh, check out my Instagram reel. You can see um, how I like processed all this stuff. Actually, I want this to be like this. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna just uh, put some resin in the middle. And then what I have here are some aluminum honeycomb chunks. Try not to get my greasy mitts all over these things. So just little bits. Um, I like these. You can kind of just cut them out and uh, you know drop them in here. Put them wherever you want. So it's kind of fun. Um, so we got that one, and then we also got one of these guys. So the same things. It was like a big brick, and the cool thing is, so it was like a probably like a two inch by two inch square, and then I just cut it down the middle, and then just kind of cut out you know some little shapes. So we got you know two batches ready to rock. And so we'll, we'll try a silicone mold as well as an HDPE mold. They both work just fine. Um, doesn't really matter which one you go with. Let's see, I wanna look at, what did I do here for this, this camera? Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty dark, huh? Let me, let me scoot this back just a little bit. Maybe it'll brighten up a little bit, jeez. Why is it so dark? Uh, I'm just going to adjust this guy here. Put it like that. How about that? A little bit brighter, sort of. All right, so we got all kinds of super chats coming in. Um, I'm going to have to kind of figure out how to... i got to turn that <laughs> volume down. That's why it's way up. I was, I was listening to a video. Um, I'm going to switch to this view. Let's see here. Yeah, I think these are gonna be pretty cool. I was really, really happy with, so, you know, sometimes, I don't know, even even at this point, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what the inside of this, you know, die stabilized wood is really gonna look like. Did it penetrate? I, it, honestly, it was years ago that I die stabilized this. So I'm like, I don't know what we got going on on the inside. And I cut it open and I was like, whoa, that's gonna be pretty sweet. Dave wants hot pink, okay. Let me write that down. So let me just kind of keep some notes. I'm gonna have to kind of figure out how, like how many colors of each one we're gonna do. I might do like, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Let's, uh, I think we should drop, let's see, what do we got going on? Uh, hot pink, 14 karat. <laughs> I don't know, Mike McEwen just likes to, to I, th I think that you just want me to get glitter all over my shop every single week. <laughs> that 14 karat gold. We're gonna have to like run out of that accidentally or something like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can pick that every week if you want, I don't care. But it is, it does get all over the place. So just, just to warn you guys, if you, uh, if you wanna not have glitter, that's, that's not the one that you wanna pick. Pearlescent purple. Emerald green, red, nice. All right, so let's see here. We, let's go with, um, on the first batch, let's do, a, let's do four colors on the first batch and just see what, what happens with that. So we'll just pick the first four, uh, pink, gold, red, and emerald green, all right? So I, before we begin, I do have a couple of announcements. Um, if you haven't seen already, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shamelessly plug my new pen blank. Um, let's see here, gotta find it. 
Um, I don't have any in the shop. I, I took them all home, so I apologize for that. But the new intergalactic blanks are available on my website today. All right, so there's a link to those. Those are the ones that have black with the micro starlight. They got blurple with the, the chunky starlight glitter and then uh, hot pink in them. And they are pretty awesome. I'm really excited about those. And I have two links now. So uh, kind of going forward with these, like the pearly blanks, um, I'm gonna start offering, they're gonna be round. Well, obviously we've been doing all these testing, you know, on the stream. Um, they're gonna be round blanks, but then there's a, a pen blank size just for like normal kit pens. It's five inches, like all the rest of my blanks. And then there's an eight and a half inch blank if you wanna start doing the, the bespoke or, you know, kitless pens. So I'm pretty excited about that, having a couple different sizes. I'm really excited about this new blank. It's pretty awesome. Chad Schimmel uh, actually turned uh, a, a bespoke pen out of, it was actually one of the like test blanks. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's, it's more chunky. The one that like the colors are more kind of chunks, um, you know, like larger pores per pass. So it's a little bit different than the ones that I'm selling now. I'm doing uh, smaller pours per pass, but um, either way, pretty awesome. And it's the same one that I, I made that, if you saw my Instagram post of that, that closed end pen that I, I made, and then Chad did one. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what everybody makes with these things also. It's gonna be pretty sweet. So those are available. Um, the other thing is my team color blanks are on sale 15% off until next Wednesday. So if you wanna pick any of those guys up, um, football's you know starting up and, and all kinds of stuff so um, lots of things going on my on my website you can find the team color blanks just click on that that uh, category and all of those are on sale so oh and you need to sorry you need to enter touchdown uh, the code word touchdown um, when you're uh, like that um, when you're checking out um, enter that that discount code to get the 15 percent off um, and then we have something really cool that's going on Oh shoot, I forgot to put the link in the description. I will have to do that after the stream. But here's a link to the Turner's Warehouse uh, ornament challenge. This is going on now and it's going through uh, like the, the cutoff date. Turner's Warehouse has to have your ornament in hand by November 27th. So you got a little bit of time, but at the same time, the earlier you can get it done, the better for them so that they can get things kind of you know set up and organized. Um, but if you're not familiar with the, the, the ornament challenge, this is the fourth year that they've been doing it over at Turner's Warehouse. Uh, it's benefiting Toys for Tots this year. Um, so they, they did St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital the first three years, and they kind of switched it this year. I, I, they, Chad was saying, like, you know, with all the things that have been going on, there's probably a few people that are kind of, like, displaced, you know, with, like, some of the flooding and all, all kinds of different things have been going on and the economic issues. Um, they thought, you know, let's, let's get some toys for the kids, you know, so they kind of switched to the Toys for Tots thing. I guess that was the rationale. Um, yeah, the ornament challenge is fun. Um, so all you have to do, if you're not familiar with what this is, um, just make an ornament. Um, it doesn't, and frankly, you don't even have to turn it, <laughs> all right? Um, there's different categories. There's one for non-turned things, um, but there's like, you know, hybrids and wood and, and like a, kind of a, a juniors, you know, kids section, um, all kinds of different things uh, that you can enter. And you can enter as many as you want, as far as, I'm, as, far as I know. Uh, and then what they do is all the ornaments that they, you know, that you've sent in, that people have sent in, they auction them off and all the proceeds go to benefit Toys for Tots. So, you know, just disclaimer, you're not going to get this ornament back. Um, you know, it's going to be auctioned off to, and someone else is going to get it, whoever wins the auction. Um, so just, just know that. But pretty cool stuff. And they have, um, uh, you know, pr lots of prizes are going to be up for grabs. I don't know who all is sponsoring yet. Um, I'm probably going to throw in some gift cards. Uh, I know that um, in the past, Easywood Tools usually sponsors this. They've usually given, they've given away like lathes and all kinds of stuff. So I think Frank, didn't you win a couple things last, last year? Um, so it's pretty good prizes usually, and, but it's you know, a good cause and it's fun. So um, you don't have to even make anything you know, super spectacular. Obviously the better you, know, you can make it, the, the more money it'll probably get. But um, either way, if you have some time, you got some materials, you don't even have to turn. It doesn't have to be special. Just get them an ornament and it will raise some money for Toys for Tots. So um, like I said, November 27th is the cutoff date. And that means that they need to have received the package in their hands by the 27th of November. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I'll be doing something. I, they just announced it yesterday, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing, but we'll probably make the blank and then turn it on the stream. 
Um, so it should be pretty fun. We'll be able to kind of craft that, you know, live and then get that thing going. So it's, it's always a fun one. And then uh, down the road, you know, they do the auctions. So if you want to, you know, donate more money or, or grab some of these ornaments, um, you can, you know, bid on them. They'll, they'll let you know what's going on. That link has all the information. I did put the link, right? Yeah, Turner's Warehouse. Um, if you uh, follow that link, um, that'll give you all the info and all, all the stuff that's going on. So it's pretty fun. I'm excited. This, this time of year is always a good one. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a category for, for just whatever. It doesn't have to be a turning. Um, it can just be made out of whatever, um, you know, however you want to do it. I, I haven't looked at the, I don't know if they changed anything. I, I know that they will accept anything. Um, uh, Let's see, youth, beginner, wood, resin, hybrid, all at well. Okay. I'm pretty sure that they will accept any ornament that you want. Oh no, shoot. <laughs> we also asked that all, I, I didn't look at all the, the rules and stuff. Okay, so I apologize. In the past, they have accepted anything. I, I guess this year they changed it to all ornaments um, are, want to be lathe turned. I don't know why they switched that. You should really have a category for non lathe turn. So I'm going to talk to Chad about that and see if that's not a hard rule because <laughs> they haven't done that in the past. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. They, they, they haven't done that in the past. I was just going off of what they used to do. But anyway, sorry. So if you could lathe turn it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, time for orna ornaments again. Yeah, <laughs> Mark's like, yeah, uh, you didn't read the rules. Yep. So, sorry. Yeah, it's a Turner's challenge. Uh, pretty sure last year they didn't do that. But, so, sorry about that, Philip. I apologize. So, anyway, on that note, why don't we make something cool? <laughs> eh, want, want, want. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I need to mention? I don't think so. I think that's it links yep, the, yep 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 okay let's do this so let me get my gloves on so we got our colors and we got our so we're gonna go with the the hdpe one first you know uh one thing i'm gonna do just to make sure this thing doesn't move around i want to kind of in the hdpe mold i want to kind of lock that that wood down a little bit i could probably do it let's see here the easiest way is to just, I, I put a little dab of hot glue in the back. I think we're just going to go with that. Um, HDPE doesn't really, you know, like the glue doesn't really like super stick to HDPE, but it holds it just enough so that it's not going to kind of float around or move. Um, so I'm just going to kind of drop a couple of, you know, blips of, of hot glue. So I'm going to warm that up real quick. And let's see here. I'm going to get my gloves on. Should be pretty fun. Should be pretty fun. Okay, and we got our little notebook ready. So let's see here. Ooh, captured ring icicle, that's sweet. Yeah, you wanna, okay, it wasn't last year, but you wanna lay, I thought so. Sweet. You won a bunch of stuff like all at once, wasn't, didn't you win like two? Pretty big things, or like two lathes somehow, two different things. I don't know. There was Frank's got the luck. Are you Irish? Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't really matter that much, but um, I'm going to explain what I'm writing down here. So first thing, I just keep a notebook for for all all my pours. I, I highly recommend that you do the same, just so you you know, can go back to it if you want to recreate it, or if you've, especially if you've learned something, um, this is the place to write down those notes. So you can go back and be like, how did that work? Or what did I do wrong? Or, you know, like whatever, D what didn't turn out the way I wanted or what did turn out the way I wanted? How do I recreate it? So um, first thing I'm going to put the date, 914. I can write and we're doing, uh, I call these super hybrids. Um, that's not a, that's just my own name for them. I'm just going to put, yeah, 
little note just to make sure. So number one, so the, the mold that I'm using, if there was no wood in this thing, um, it would be 460 grams is what I would pour. Um, so obviously there's quite a bit of wood. Um, there's probably, let's just go with a half of that, like 220 or so. 20, that should be plenty, but I got Happy Fun Cup to fill, so, and we can start a new one. I need to get, uh, I, I think I have about six of these things. We need to get a couple more, because the, the mystery boxes are going to get those probably for Christmas. Um, let's see here. So, number one, we're doing, um, I'm just going to call it the HDPE one mold. And then that I call this my six blank mold. And then we're going to use uh, Lumalite Clear Slow Set. And I'm super excited. I just got my order from Lumalite. We got more Lumalite Clear. I was running out. I was like, oh man, I wasn't sure if I was going to have any resin today. Uh, luckily, I didn't go through as much as I thought. I, I conserved a little bit. Alex is here. Oh, you won last year. That's right. That's awesome. Welcome to the stream, Alex. How's it going, man? Okay, so let's see here. Number one, we're doing four colors. So let's. I'm just gonna mix up three. I'm gonna mix up 300 grams. That's probably gonna be way too much, but like I said, happy fun cup. And then we got four colors. We're gonna do. Dave wanted pink, and we're, I'm just gonna. Uh, let's see here. What does Mark want? Emerald green. Can I move this? No. Of course, it's not modular. Why would it be modular? <laughs> so let's just do. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna try doing like we're gonna do like. Hmm. There's just not that much, so we're, we're just gonna split it into four. Seventy-five grams. times four. So we're going to do hot pink. We're going to do uh, 14 carat nugget. We're going to do emerald green. And wait, hold on a minute. Did I miss something up? Pink? Red. Lelia wanted red. And red. So let's do, we're going to make this we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. We're gonna do a, I've got a fun red, if I can find it, if I have any left. Ooh, yeah. We got a, a glittery, this is actually the, the metallic flake. It's basically glitter. So we're gonna use that, oh, my camera's bouncing around. We're gonna use that. Basically a glitter. It's like the metallic flake that you would see in like a bass boat or cars and stuff. We're gonna use that. Metallic flake, we're gonna go emerald green. Let's see here, we got, I think we, don't we have an emerald green in eye candy? Oh, we got an emerald green eye candy. I knew it. This is the one that, that I like this color. It's an interesting green. I like it a lot, okay. Emerald green, uh, oh, that's the pen side. Eye candy. And probably only need about like a half teaspoon. Would probably be good. I'm gonna go with a full teaspoon of that red, the metallic flake, because that's all that's in there. And I'm probably gonna add one drop of red dye just to make sure that it's got color. Uh, 14 carat nugget, we're gonna go with a half teaspoon of that. Hot pink. I'm thinking. Okay, so uh, that's not gonna work. It's not hot. It's not hot. I'm thinking fluorescent pink. That's that's as hot as it gets in here. What do you guys think about that? Hot pink. Um, and we can maybe even add some macro sparkle and see what that does to the pink. So we're gonna go fluorescent pink, 
die. Hopefully it's not. I find one thing that I will mention, guys, the, these Illumilite's fluorescent dyes, they seem to they seem to have a, a relatively short shelf life. I'm just going to be completely, I guess that's the best way to put it. Like they kind of like dry up and I don't know if there's a way I need to talk to somebody over there. I don't know if maybe if you added a little bit of the part A or something like that to it, it, it would kind of rejuvenate it, but it just seems to like dry out quick. So just, you know, I definitely wouldn't buy giant jugs of this stuff and, and make sure that when you buy it, you know, try to use it because I seem to end up throwing away a lot of these jars and buying new ones. Um, and then macro sparkle, we'll just add like, I don't know, a small scoop of it. And the macro sparkle, it's like kind of like glittery stuff. See that? Let's just see what happens, I don't know. We'll, we'll just give it a shot, see what happens. It'll probably lighten that pink a little bit, but whatever. Might add some some fun to it. All right, so let's see here. Oh, that's that's smart with the putting the date on your blanks. Sparkles. Connie likes the sparkles. Yep. Okay, so I think we're ready, and we got our hot glue hot glue gun ready there. So the one issue is if you've sprayed your mold with, with stoner or any mold release, then it's not this glue is not going to stick to it. So what you need to do in that case, grab yourself a little, a little piece of something, paper towel, grab a little bit of acetone, and I'm just going to kind of wipe off in a couple spots in there with the acetone. and. Then I'm going to add me some hot glue. Nope, I need to add another stick of glue. I think I need to buy some more hot glue. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. It wasn't, wasn't working. So we're just going to add a little bit of hot glue on the back side of this thing. One there and one there. And then this, this hot glue will be out of the, the way. I'll just end up kind of cutting that off probably. Kind of hold it there and that'll just kind of keep it in place you know that's all we're trying to do it doesn't need to be like you don't need to like glue it to death you just need something that'll kind of hold that in place for a little bit while the resin cures okay so we'll just move that wipe off a little bit add some hot glue All right, and we shouldn't need to do that on the silicone mold. I think they're going to kind of stay in place on that one. Now I have been this this mold and the wood have been in the the oven, um, and that's a good idea for any kind of stuff that you're going to be casting in any materials like wood. Um, this is stabilized, so it's not like it's full of moisture or anything, but. The surface could have some moisture on it, especially if you're in like Florida or somewhere that's like super humid. Um, there could be surface moisture, so it's a good idea to heat up anything that you um, are going to cast. And I'm also, I, I don't think that you really need to put the aluminum honeycomb in the oven for like ever. Um, it doesn't need to be super hot or anything like that. Um, just, you know, put it in for a little bit. I'm just going to put it in now few pieces that are will be ready to go just heat it up a little bit and you should be good to go i don't know that it, you know it being hotter is going to hurt anything either but um I, I just don't really think that it's fully necessary again it's mainly just to kind of flash off any surface moisture that you might have on there Ooh, had to sneeze Hopefully I got the, the mute on before I did. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I know, I, it, it sucks. All the other dyes are good. I mean, I've had, they just sit there and I don't have to do anything, but those, those fluorescent ones, they just, 
they're, they're a different type of dye. They're, there's something different about, you know, they're definitely not a transparent dye, um, but it definitely has a shorter shelf life, it seems like. So just kind of watch out. That's, that's what I've experienced. Maybe, I don't know. I, I want to talk to Illumilite about those because perhaps if you put it in the, the, like a fridge or something like that, maybe it would last longer. Oh, I just realized I had one other little uh, announcement. We got mystery box number three in and it's feeling heavy. It's making some noise. I don't know what's in this thing, but it's pretty big. I'm not gonna give everything away. We got some really awesome, Haley did some awesome drawings on this one too. So you'll have to wait and see the video when it comes out. But I wanted to let you know um, it's it's in. And actually, I'm, prob I'm not gonna do streams next week because I wanna try and get that video done. So we're not gonna do streams on Wednesday and Saturday of next week. I got a ton of blanks that I need to make and I want to get those videos shot and edited and ready. So just to let you guys know about that. All right, so what? Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. So we got everything ready. We got our stuff. Let's get some resin. Mix it up. Uh, I got a cup up here that fairly clean. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the I'm gonna switch to the Canon view. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully I'll remember to switch it back. <laughs> Whenever I do things like that, when I say that, then usually I'm good. Unless things get out of control. Alright, so 150 times I don't even need a gigantic cup. Let's just back up here. We're not mixing that much resin. I'm gonna get a small cup, 150 of part A. Oh, and uh, for, for those of you who use Illumilite Clear Slow and can't stand the stupid caps on these things, um, Brian, the TBC bushings, he's making silicone plugs so you can get rid of the stupid cap and just you know seal it with the, the plugs. He's gonna be sending me some. Um, and uh, I will definitely be using them and I'll show you how they work and let you know what's going on with them But I'm sure they're pretty cheap um, But <laughs> man, I can't stand that cap on the part B it just gets stuck and it's just a pain So good on you Brian for for coming up with a really good solution for those I I actually had been meaning I was gonna make some of those myself and it was I, I told him I was like I was gonna do that but you know someday just never came and so I was like, I will gladly accept uh, you sending me some. So I will be plugging those things, but <laughs> plugging the plugs. Uh, but, you know, it's not really like I got to plug them. It's just going to be like, here they are. They work. <laughs> so pretty awesome. Okay, so we got 150 grams of part A. Oh, that one. Not too bad. Not too bad, and then 150, let's see, let's get our other cups ready. And uh, one one little tip, most of you guys probably know this one. Uh, 70, yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go with the paper cups, I think. We got some nice little paper cups. Doesn't really matter, but I think they're cheaper than my plastic ones that I usually use, and it's plenty of, plenty of uh, space. So uh, one little thing, I'm not particularly worried about this myself, but um, what I'm gonna do is get these things prepared, um, three of them, um, get the stuff that I wanna put in there just you know, in the cup so that you know, it'll kinda go a little bit faster. Uh, it, it definitely, especially when it's like really hot. So we, we've been pretty lucky, the, the temperatures have gone down here a little bit. I mean, it's still 80 in the shop right now, but that's a lot better than 87, so you know. So we're gonna do a half teaspoon of this, the emerald green. And when I say half, I usually go a little, I just, it's, I'm not like, it doesn't need to be like perfect when we're dealing with micas. Uh, my thing is I want it to be a minimum, you know, like at least a half teaspoon. Um, but I usually kind of go with, with larger scoops than, you know, like an even quarter teaspoon. Um, so just to let you know. And then we're gonna go with a full teaspoon of this um, just to make sure we got lots of this red stuff. In fact, I'm gonna go a little bit more just for good measure. That might be a case where you might wanna, you know, really record how much did you actually put in there. 
Um, luckily, I got a video, so if I really need to, I'll go back to this video. But And then with the macro pearl, let's see here. We're going to go with just like a, a kind of a little scoop. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to do this yet. We're going to put the mac we're going to put the pink. Let's see. What is the other color? What are we missing? We got red. Oh, the 14 karat gold nugget. Okay. I'm going to do this one last because I want to kind of sneak up on these colors and all this stuff and how much macro sparkle. So I'm going to put that aside and we're going to put it in the cup that I'm stirring. Cuz we obviously can't put anything in that cup yet. And we're going to go with a half teaspoon of this gold stuff. Um, I think where this stuff gets really messy is what I find is my like the paper cups. I mean, I'm sorry, the plastic cups get um, like staticky. Like there's like electrostatic charge to them. And so these little glitter things, it just goes like everywhere when I try and dump them in there. So these paper cups, they, there's no electrostatic, there's no static, you know. It's nice. I like it. Okay, so we have our little three cups ready and we got our other stuff. So we got our part A, we've zeroed that out. Let's move ahead here, let's move ahead. Anything else here? Yeah, I usually don't have to really deal with humidity here, but I have, I mean, even in, you know, cause we got pretty similar, maybe a little bit higher humidity than Vegas, but um, not really, you know, not much. Um, I have seen a few times where there was a little bit of surface moisture on something, even in my shop. And I mean, I can pretty much leave stuff out. There's really like 15% maybe humidity. Um, my, I have a little, whatever, hygrometer or whatever those things are. I think it says 13% right now. <laughs> so, you know, I don't really have to worry about that, but still, you know, moisture can cause an issue and it, it can cause bonding issues too. What am I doing here? 150. I got to think what I'm doing. You know, if you get some moisture on there, it could cause a little bit of, you know, a bond issue or something. And so always best to just give it a, give it a little heat up. I mean, you probably, you're going to want to heat up your mold anyway, if you're putting it in the square mold like that, or even the, the silicone mold, it just, it's not a bad, bad idea. The only time I don't really heat up the molds is, you know, like the PVC pipes. I don't really find that necessary there's they're all it's it's curves you know it's a round surface so it just doesn't really cause any any kind of issues pullback issues or anything like that uh, let's see here. i'm gonna use this mm. we'll just use this one all right so we're using alumilite clear slow resin it's a urethane it's got a 12 or so minute working time depending on the temperature in your shop. And it works really good for, for you know, hybrids and different stuff. I, I really like turning it. Pretty much my favorite resin, kind of go-to resin. Pretty much all my blanks are made out of it. The, there are, but I, I do switch it up sometimes. Um, sometimes when I'm doing certain types of hybrids, if, if like the wood has a smooth surface, I'll, I'll switch to, uh, amazing clear cast for some of those things uh, basically an epoxy and i use deep pour for certain things so it just kind of depends on what i'm doing but for about 85 percent of what i do lumilite clear slow is what i reach for um it really excels at when you know i like the the time you know the working time on this one because i do a lot of color swirling and stuff like that and like glitter suspension um, so, you know, I don't really want to be waiting like 45 minutes or whatever till the end of the working time on, on an epoxy. 12 minutes, perfect. I love it. Plus, it makes it easier for streaming. It would make things quite difficult if we were waiting the entire stream for the, the resin to get to the right temperature just to pour some color swirls. Okay, so I think that's good. Zero this out. We're going to put 75 grams in each one of these guys. And I mean, frankly, it doesn't have to be exact. Like, whatever. 74. Good enough. You know? I'm all right with that. I do kind of want to get 
know what I'm doing here at least, you know. Um, and you can really, you know, you can mix up the amounts. Um, you just want like a kind of an accent color of one and just put, you know, a little bit in there. It'd be good. All right, number two. And number three. All right. Now I'm going to go, let's see, we got se about 75 grams in there. I'm going to put a, a gram of this pink dye in here. So one gram, I'm going to write that down. Now you want to shake these things up, make sure the lid is on and it's tight and I'm actually going to cover it just because I tend to get this stuff everywhere. All right, we're shaking it. We're giving it a good shake. Okay. I'm gonna go with one gram, hopefully. Ugh. It's really thick, let's see here. Uh, oof. See what I mean, this stuff is just, I'm squeezing the heck out of this and it's just like thick and rubbery. So <sighs> luckily I bought a new one. Uh, where is it? So this will give you an idea of what it should look like. Open this thing. Ooh. Usually these things explode on me. Get it all over the place. Oh man, the thing does not want to open. Okay, that's not working. We're going to use a knife. All right, we're back on track. So, you guys can't see. Still kind of thick, but you know, it should be able to flow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'll waste a little bit for you guys just so you can see. That's what it should, that's how it should act, you know? Not like this big chunk of stuff, which, like I said, I think you can thin it out possibly, but I, I just, I don't know what's going on with this stuff. So. All right, so if that ain't hot pink, I don't know what is. So we're gonna add a little bit of this macro sparkle. Just a, a little, little bit. Just to make it kind of pearly. See what we got here. Yeah. There's a little bit of sparkle in there. That's kind of cool. Macro sparkle is a good one to, to just kind of add, you know, add a, add a little bit of that fun to something. You can just put it in like a, a, a regular dye. Uh, you know, even like a transparent or, you know, whatever. You could put it in the divine pigments, even an opaque, and it'll just give you a little bit. It kind of, I got to be honest, as, as far as I'm concerned, it gives you that kind of diamond blank look. A little bit of sparkly in there, you know. I have a feeling that we're probably about ready to pour because I was messing around for... Good thing that I put these in the cups. Come on. That's thick. There we go. That mixed in. Let's see what temperature we're at here. 101. Oh, 
we'll probably pour around 110, 115 maybe. Something like that. And I, I change when I pour. Hey, what's up, David? And about 105. I'm just kind of looking at the viscosity. So the problem is when the temperatures start changing in your shop, things get kind of difficult. Um, you know, figuring out what the right temperature to pour is. Because, I mean, this is... I can probably start pouring right now based on the viscosity of this, just kind of looking at it. And so it, it helps to understand, you know, once you've, once you've done a few pours and kind of see, you know, what you're kind of looking at at certain temperatures and what, what you know, what is the viscosity is, is I think more important than what the temperature is. So um, when things are a little bit more, you know, you don't know for sure. Um, I think it's best to, to really try and understand, you know, what, what, where am I, what am I looking at? What viscosity do I want this to be at typically when I, when I do pour? Just helps to kind of have an, an idea. You don't have to be like a, you know, expert or, you know, perfect. Like, oh, that's exactly the viscosity. It's not like that. It's just have an idea of what you, you know, what do you want this to kind of look like when you're pouring it? And it'll make your life a lot easier, I think, <laughs> you know when temperatures fluctuate or you know whatever this one's a little bit on the thin side but there's no you know mica powders or anything like that in there so we're just going to go ahead and pour start pouring these guys i'm going to start with these other colors these are going to be wild Got some crazy colors going on here And you can just have at it, do whatever you want, however you want to pour it. You may come up with, you know, some method that works better. Everybody's kind of got their own little method. Um, a lot of times I just kind of change it up and do whatever. Doesn't really matter to me. Let's just say that I haven't really seen a method typically that really looks terrible. They all kind of work in the end. You might get slightly different results doing slightly different things, but just have at it and have fun, you know? Should have added some glow powder maybe. Well, I wouldn't have wanted to cut that, but. Only a little bit of this red left, so let's get that out of the cup here. And a little bit more of this sparkle gold. We don't need to fill this. These things are thicker than I really need them. So let's, uh, we're going to dump this uh, gold into the Happy Fun Cup. Maybe we'll do one one quick pass with the green and then we're going to put the rest in the happy fun cup now i like to give my blanks a little bit of a, a swoosh that'll just mix the colors up a little bit more you know it'll be kind of fun so man I don't even know what's going on here. There's so many crazy colors in this. What do you guys think about this? Oh, man. All right, so, oh, I'm spilling it all over the place. Let me get uh, my pressure pot open. <clears throat> get this sucker in the, the pressure pot. 
Hopefully the hopefully the level won't change. There are some areas. I just should have thought about that. I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. <clears throat> Switch to this other view here. No, not that view. There's the view that I was looking for. Get it in the pressure pot. And we'll pressurize this guy. And this stuff, uh, so Alumilite clear slow. I would leave this in the pressure pot for a couple hours, two to three hours probably. Um, and I'm gonna go up to, really, just watch out with your pressure pot. Whatever pressure pot you have, make sure you're not going above the max PSI for your pot. But really all you need is around, I usually recommend, recommend you know, minimum of like 50 is good, just in case there's a little bit of a leak. 40 is really all you need. Um, I would say I wouldn't recommend going below 40 for resin casting stuff. Um, 50 is a good number and most pots will allow you to go to 50. Um, but like I said, just make sure that you're not over pressurizing your pot. That's where you run into problems. Um, <clears throat> mine goes up to like 80 if I want. So I usually take mine to 70, so I don't even go to the max. There's just not really any advantage to going, you know, super high with your pressure. I want to clean this up because I'm going to have to do some other stuff later on today and I don't really want to be dealing with blobs of <laughs> wet resin. I get it on my hand, then I get it on my clothes and uh, I'm not happy about that usually. Especially with my brand new Saturday morning cartoons shirt. I don't want to get that all nasty, you know? All right, so is there any questions that I put? Oh, I didn't put the honeycomb in, Dave. Well, some of them are not going to have the honeycomb. It happens. I was focused on pink dyes and all kinds of stuff. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I don't really want to open the pressure pot at this point. It's it was kind of at the end of the working time, so we're just gonna have to say whoops. They're still gonna be awesome. I'm not even worried about that. Next ones are gonna be even more awesome though. Um, one thing, if you have a saw stop, make sure that you turn off the brake when you cut these things. I'm gonna have to really remember. Otherwise, it'll blow the brake off when you run into the honeycomb. So that's not a bad one to use the um, the bandsaw on. I'm gonna have to watch myself though. That's one of the reasons I don't really do a lot of honeycomb anymore. Because <laughs> I have blown so many brakes hitting running into aluminum honeycomb. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah, you'll get what you get. Let's see, Mark's here, what's up? Um, so Richard asked about the cups I was using, um, just, yeah. I don't know, people always people always say, don't get the waxed cups. And I mean, I, I honestly have never even seen that. Um, but, you know, whatever, these ones are f five ounce. Uh, I would imagine that if it's a waxed cup, it's gonna be like blatantly obvious, um, but just paper cups, you know, whatever. I got a couple different sizes. Those are five ounce. These ones are three ounce. Oh, that's the wrong camera. Tony cam. So. Five ounce, three ounce, doesn't really matter. I, I have bigger ones. Um, one of the advantages to, to paper cups is depending on which ones you get or you know which ones you're using. Um, 
you can just squeeze a bunch of them so you could actually potentially just hold a bunch of cups in your hands squeeze them all together and pour it all at once we might do that on the next one um, that works really well in a block mold where you can just grab a bunch and just pour it all at once it's different than like pouring all the colors in the same cup um, that can get kind of you know weird um, a lot of times i find that like one color dumps all out at once and then the other ones are kind of bled together but if you just grab all the cups you know three or so and pour them at the same time then the streams are kind of all dropping at different areas and you can just kind of like pour them all at once but there's really it you know whatever doesn't i don't there's no rules um that i know of other than the wax thing you know i guess is an issue i, I i've just i've never even seen wax cups when i'm buying them so i just bought those on amazon um if if it matters i will go and get a link to these ones Oops, that's not right. By 50 ounce cups. Oh, for goodness sakes. Learn how to type. There we go. And they were like reasonably priced. 600 of them for 27 bucks. You could probably get them cheaper somewhere else, possibly. You buy more or something like that, but anybody wants to check them out here's a link on amazon lily is in for blurple all right amy's here what's up what did you miss you missed me screwing up <laughs> i was supposed to put honeycomb in those but i didn't all right so on the next one we got let's see here another emerald no wait hold on a minute uh dave one, two, three, four. Okay, emerald green. We got pearlescent purple and blurple. All right. Well, let's try that out. Let's see what happens. Busy day today. Yeah. I've had a bunch of those lately. Been trying to keep stocked up on things, launching the intergalactics, which is not that big of a deal or anything, but oh man, the photos on those things were a pain. Those are tough. Okay, so let's get back to this. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Yeah. I really want to get better camera angles. Okay. I did see a ring light thing that I want, um, but I think it holds a phone in the middle. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell what was going on with the mounting. All right, so number two, let's see here. So if you want to super chat, if you want to get in on the colors here, uh, make sure to super chat. Uh, but there's going to be kind of a time limit. We should have, uh, I should have mentioned that before. Uh, let's see here. Number two. Um, this time we're going to be using the, the silicone mold from Jake Blanks. And I think that the, I think these things are going to stay put. The silicone kind of holds it somewhat, hopefully. Um, I could put something on top just to make sure these things don't float. Or a lot of times it's not like it floats. It's just that the resin kind of gets under there and it can kind of lift it up. So um, I can just put something on top of the, the burl chunks, like a little piece of HDPE. I think I got, I got one somewhere here. There's one. So I can just put this on top of there and that should kind of hold them down and everything. Um, even if they did move a little bit, uh, eh, whatever. It's not that big of a deal but I think it should hold it. And if I would have cut these a little bit tighter, I actually cut these for the HDPE molds and then thought, oh, let's, let's go for the, the Jake Blanks um, later just to kind of show both, both of them. Um, but like I said, either way, it doesn't matter which mold you use. It's just whatever you, know, you prefer or have <laughs> on hand. That's all you need. 10 out of 10, sweet. And I know the Beastie Boys, I know. It's been fun using the, the, the thing on like reels and stuff. I love that song. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so number two, let's see here. Got lots of, yeah, don't forget the aluminum. Maybe they won't be aluminum ones. Maybe we'll just go with Burl. <laughs> if I forget again, I don't think I will this time. All right, so we're gonna do, I mean, I think that that was plenty of resin. We'll go 300 grams again. 
And we'll have even more to pour in the, the Happy Fun Cup. And we got two right now. So I think Amy should pick a color because Amy's here. So pick a color, Amy. We got pearly purple, pearlescent purple. I'm just going to put purple because they're all pearlescent. Well, I, I hear you. You don't want like a, a dye. So let's do... I'm going to do something kind of fun. We're going to make a pearl out of a dye. What do you guys think about that? We're going to do it. Just to show you. Please don't forget. Oh, I thought you said, please don't forget the, the honeycombs. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate it. Hey, there's Brian. You're just in time for the second pour. We're just waiting for some uh, for Amy to pick a color. And then we'll get going. I'm going to pick a color. Oh, Mark's in with the orange. Sweet. Gold. Oh. How about, what do you think about golden rod? It's kind of golden. Kind of yellow, I guess, a little bit. But it's what I use for my honeycomb. Um, like the 3D printed honeycomb. Or we got Olympic gold. That's definitely golden. Um... Let's see, do we have any other gold ones? You know what's a good one is the antique gold. Remember that? Where's that at? Do I have that? Hmm. There it is, antique gold. That's fun. It's kind of an orangey gold. Basically anything metal. Ooh. Hmm, metal. What do you think about antique copper, Amy? What do you think about that? I just haven't ever used it, I don't think. I've used all these other ones. But if you want gold, that's cool. I, I can do any, any of these golds. I'll pick a gold. All right, Mark, have a good one. So we got orange, we got two, uh, let's see, we're, Frank wants a pearlescent purple. So we're gonna make a pearlescent purple out of a dye. And blurple. Okay, so this time we're just gonna go with the regular blurple. All right, I'm not gonna add the, the chunky starlight glitter to this one this time. Um, Cause we've been doing that a lot with like in every single blank. And I think it'll be kind of fun just to put the, the color shift in there. I'm going to put a very, very tiny bit of purple dye in there, but very tiny. I usually put like a drop. We're just going to put a tiny bit. Try and let this blurple really kind of show through. Amy likes the copper. Okay. And then we got orange from Mark. Um, orange. You know what I want to, let's see here. What do we think about, what do you think about saffron orange? Saffron. Wiggly saffron orange. Let's try that out. I don't, I've never used that either. Okay, so we got purple. Let's see, how many colors do we have here? So we got purple, purple, orange. Is that four? I think we got four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with this. HTC adapters. I'm not sure what's an HTC adapter. Oh, TBC. Okay. Yeah, yeah, TBC. I'm telling you. I think it's, I don't know. Most people like it. Um, some people really like their mandrels, though. I mean, you know, and that, that's fine. If you get good results, um, you got to go with what you like. But most people kind of like the TBC things that I've, that I've talked to anyway. So we're going to do... Um, let's see here, 75, so we're going to do 75 grams of each again. And let's see here, we don't really need a whole lot of dye necessarily. Let's just go with, I don't know. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put a half teaspoon. I mean, sorry, a half gram, 0.5 grams of violet dye. 
that's an alumilite dye. And then we're gonna do some micro pearl. We're gonna add a little bit of micro pearl to this and see how that looks. So I'm just gonna add some scoops. Let's try an eighth. That might be too much. It might lighten it a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna try an eighth teaspoon. And this is a case where I'm gonna be pretty accurate when I measure this, okay? Because we're trying to do something and I, I don't wanna be like, oh, it's about an eighth. We're trying to come up with a, a, a recipe here. So uh, eighth teaspoon of micro pearl. If all I'm doing is just adding a bunch of antique copper, one thing, uh, no matter how much you add or, or whatever, it's not gonna ever change anything. But if you're trying to get a certain result or re recreate a result, then you need to be accurate, you know? Okay, so we got antique copper. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of that or so. Saffron orange. Half teaspoon. And we're gonna do blurple. We're gonna put a half teaspoon plus a pinprick of violet dye. Just a pinprick, okay? Just a pinprick. I'm gonna move this in front of my face so that I can see the honeycomb and not hopefully forget. <laughs> and then he started making them, yep. Yeah. Saffron orange is super legit, nice. Um, I'll, I don't think antique copper is green. It's more just like copper, but in this case, you know. Definitely different than just, because I've, I've gotten some copper ones and that's different. Okay, so I think we're ready. What do you guys think? Um, let me get a cup. Get a cup. I'm gonna switch to that other view for a minute. Double, no, not that one, this one. You can kind of, this seems like it's dark. I don't know. Doesn't it look dark to you? Hmm, weird. Always something. Okay, so let's get our thing. We got 150 grams of part A. I need some more of these little, little rag things. Um, I think I'm gonna grab my, like I said, I really don't want drips of stuff all over the place today. We're gonna put the, the drip color. I know that I have, <laughs> it's funny. you guys are probably laughing. I have a silicone mat and that's not good enough. I need something else. I like my silicone mats too, but when I'm doing stuff like this, putting it down and there's just tons of drips, I'd rather just use one of these little mat things. It's so much easier for me. Then I just toss it. Okay, so 150 grams of part A. Okay, we got it. I'm doing Pink Floyd. And 150 of Part B. Should have probably filled our things, but that's okay. Oh, I went over a little bit. I think I'm gonna come back with some part A. I need one and a half uh, grams of, why do I keep saying teaspoon? Part A, so I'm just gonna kind of sneak up. If it's not perfect, it's okay. There we go. 
probably wouldn't have caused any issues, but why take the chance, you know? All right. Oh yeah, copper does turn green. That's like a real copper. These are just mica powders. Oh, protect. <laughs> yep. I'm telling you. you Gotta protect. I just can't stand the drips. Like, I, the problem is I don't want to have to wait with these mats, you know? I'd rather just move it. And I don't want to take the mat up either. So it's, it's uh, I'm telling you, it's problematic. My life, getting my head in here. Oh, see, I'm getting it all over me. What happens? I get excited. Okay. Here we go. Getting a little out of control there. Oh, just a little pinprick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I got you. I was like, I'm still not seeing the. Okay, here we go. Mm. That's not what I want. Okay. So I'm gonna start dumping my, well, I'm just gonna fill my cups and then put the powder in. 75 grams. Actually, I'm just going to kind of mix it up a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to go with 50 on this one. We're going to do 50 of the antique copper, just because I, I said. I'm going off the, 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 the plan, I know, but that's okay. I just want to mix it up a little bit, you know. We got 50 of that. I'm just going to go 38 of blurple. It's going to be like an accent color. So half a teaspoon of blurple or so. Oh, I don't need a full half. And then a pinprick, literally, toothpick prick. Um, let, me, let me just stir this up a little bit real quick. Oh, you guys aren't overhead yet, huh? Here we go. Get this zoom. Let's zoom this in. Let's just get it going here. Here we go. All right, so we're going to mix this up. This is the blurple. So this is the blue to purple color shift powder. I saw this stuff on my website. And I'm happy to announce that we are going to have, um, it's going to be coming in jars soon rather than baggies because I hate baggies too. Um, and I finally found a decent, Decent deal on some baggies. Where did, where did I put my... Where's my pinprick? There it is. So I'm just going to take a little tiny bit. That's just going to add a little bit of color to this. That's all you need, really. Look at that. A little bit of color, okay? Get a stir stick in this guy. Mix that up. We're gonna go heavy on the on the orange. Okay. 
and we're going to go about 50 grams in this one. I don't even know, 50, eh, 60. We're going to go light on these three colors, and then we're going to go heavy on orange. Okay, so purple, we're going to add, well, I'm just going to add a drop. We're going to, I'm totally going off of my, <laughs> what I wrote in the book. I'm going to add a drop. And then we're going to add an eighth teaspoon. I'm going to, I'm going to add more purple to kind of darken this up if I need to. So this is micro pearl. I like micro pearl. It, it, it really gives you a nice kind of, uh, kind of like mother of pearl, pearl necklace, you know, whatever look. Um, but in this case, it's just going to give us a, a pearl color to our dye. So where this comes in handy, you know, you can, you can get like just about any color mica powder and that's great. Um, but where this kind of comes in handy is this will pearlize a dye. So if you got a kind of nice, you know, a dye color that you really like, now we basically have a pearl. Um, and all I had to use was a little bit of that micro pearl um, to make it. It did lighten the, you know, the shade a little bit. So it's not like it's going to be absolutely perfect, but um, it really works pretty well in a pinch if you just need to add a little bit of pearl to a color, you know. So there's a little trick for you guys. Okay, and then we're gonna go with the rest. We're gonna go with this saffron orange. So at this point, we're gonna need to put like a ton in. I'm gonna put like three quarter teaspoon, maybe more. Let's see where we're at on that. That's three quarters. And for pen blanks, what we want is we want it to be kind of opaque or as, as opaque as possible. We don't want to be seeing that tube. I still recommend you paint the tubes anyway, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. You don't want to find out that it's kind of see-through in some area after you've turned the pen. So just insurance policy, paint your tubes if you're doing mica powders. But if you can't really see your stir stick through there, then you should be fine. So I'm not going to add any more. That's pretty good. Let's see what temperature we're at now. 106. We can probably start pouring pretty soon here. Let me just wipe off these little things here. Get this stuff out of my way. We'll be ready to rock. Okay, get our cups out of the way, get our thing centered. I'm gonna get my rack ready to go as well. Uh, should have had that ready earlier, okay. I think that'll fit, right? Yeah. Okay. We are ready, guys. We are ready. Oh, I was going to grab all the cups, wasn't I? <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> I 
That's why I always say don't do distracted casting, okay? Just never works for anybody. Ooh, that was just barely enough. And I'm gonna use this smaller stick. Come in here and give this a little bit of a mix. All right, there you have it, guys. Did I miss, oh, we need honeycomb. I almost messed up again. Sometimes you need to kind of help it out a little bit. You don't want to like really force it. You want to make sure that the, the resin is pushing through those cells. Okay. I would say one maybe drawback to the silicone molds is it can flex. And so I didn't put my little, I'm gonna put this little uh, HDPE piece on top of the, the burls just to try and help it stay down. I don't I don't really actually think it's going to go anywhere, but All right. Into the pressure pot you go. Let's switch to this other camera view here. Ah, how about that? And into my favorite pressure pot. I love this thing. Um, one thing that I, I think I am going to do, <clears throat> even though this thing doesn't really move around on me that much, um, I'd still rather have it kind of locked down. So I think what I'm going to do is just drop a couple of uh, pieces of wood on this this uh, shelf around the, the feet. And that way it won't even move. I don't have to like even think about it twisting or anything like that. It really doesn't. It's, it's a great pot. It's a great setup. And as long as you kind of push down while you're twisting it because this thing isn't you know it's just on it's the feet that it comes with it's not locked in so it's not really twisting or anything but once you get to the kind of the end that's when it can kind of move on you i think i'm going to probably just get a couple of little things and just kind of lock it down in there then i don't have to worry i can go faster and there we go i almost forgot about that <laughs> I know, the, that pressure pot is awesome. It's seriously my favorite favorite pressure pot. I was so happy when they came out with it. Um, the five gallon from California Air Tools works great too. I don't like five gallon pressure pots particularly. If I don't have to use one, um, I would rather, you know, for like little things like pen blanks and stuff, they're just, it's clunky, you know? Now, if you can only get one pressure pot and you are gonna do pen blanks and you may do some bowls and stuff down the road, then of course just get the five gallon but you know if all you're doing is smaller things man this thing is great the lid the problem i have with the five gallon is the lid's really heavy on most of them and it's just it's clunky you know it's just not particularly fun to work with that little guy though perfect price tag you know fully set up out of the box all you got to do is set the regulator i mean that takes two seconds literally so and a uh, big thank you to turner's warehouse for sending this to me so i could try it out um, i'm really happy with that thing it's a really good one for um because it's the feet kind of keep it locked down 
um, even without it being like bolted or anything like that. Um, it's a good pot for doing like demos and stuff. You can take it somewhere and it's not like it's gonna be moving around on you like some of the other ones. So it's a, it's a really awesome pot. Um, yeah, I always put the honeycomb at the end. If you do it at the beginning, um, the problem is the, the resin's not necessarily gonna get um, in there. Like if you pour it over the honeycomb, it can trap air pockets. So I never do that. Um, people do it, um, you know, but I, I just think, I, I don't like that. I, I'd rather push it in because um, the air is just, you know, the resin is just gonna be pushed. It's gonna push the air up and out. You're not gonna get any like air pockets in there so that's why i do it that way it's going to mix the colors up more um i definitely would not try and pour on top of the the eighth inch honeycomb stuff um i just i don't i don't think that's a good idea you're kind of so so this stuff i mean that's a really small hole just eighth inch cell i don't think that's a great idea personally but i mean i don't know I'm just worried about air pockets. I don't like them. <laughs> so, you know, it may work otherwise. Oh man, I'm out of gloves, guys. All right, so that's all we have for today, I guess. Um, again, the ornament challenge is going on right now. The due date, the final due date, where they have to have the package in their hands is November 27th. So you got a couple months to work on this. You wanna make an ornament, send it to Turner's Warehouse and it's going to be benefiting Toys for Tots. So that's pretty awesome. Um, again, I kind of messed up. You do have to make, it's a, a turned project. Um, so I, I misspoke earlier, but um, here's a link to the information and everything you need to know about the, the charity ornament challenge. Um, there's going to be prizes available. There's different categories that you can enter. Um, I don't know all the rules. I was, I've already misspoken about different rules and stuff. So make sure to read that page. That'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, and then again, uh, the intergalactic blanks are available for purchase. Now there's a link to that. And the team color blanks on my website are also on sale for 15% off right now. Um, use code touchdown, touchdown. Um, we're celebrating the kickoff of uh, NFL season. Um, so the, the team color blanks are on sale until next Wednesday. Um, then they're, they're back to regular. So make sure to, to stock up now. Um, while they're 15% off. And, but just when you're checking out, make sure to enter the code touchdown so you get that applied, the 15% off on those. So let's see here. You get an employee discount? Nice. I like that. Christmas bonus. <laughs> it just reminds me of um, Christmas vacation. You don't want to buy the pressure pot before you get the, the bonus because it, it may not come. gonna blow it up yeah i can't wait to make mine i'm not sure what i'm gonna make yet i gotta think about that um but like i said we're gonna do the the, the ornament we'll do the casting and the turning on the the live stream once i figure out what we're actually gonna make and we're gonna get on that you know sooner than later kind of thing so it should be pretty fun i i love that I, we've done it every well i've done it every year um and it's always a fun one you know like people go totally bonkers on these things you know um, really just amazing work that people send in. So, and, but you don't need to go, you know, super crazy if you don't want to, you know, if you, especially if you don't have time, um, I highly recommend just make something simple so that you can get it sent in rather than not send something, you know, if, if time or something like that's a, a limitation, just make something simple and, and the money that it, it raises is going to go to a good cause. So either way, doesn't matter. But if you want to go nuts on it, there's some, some pretty steep uh, competition in this thing. People make some really awesome ones. So I'm looking forward to this year's ornaments. Let's see here. Let me, let me see if I'm missing any questions or any other thingies here. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, actually, I have links to Honeycomb, too. Um, so the, the aluminum honeycomb, for anybody that doesn't know, um, is available on my website. I got three sizes. There's a link down in the description. I should have said that before. I wasn't thinking. I was so excited about my intergalactic blanks <laughs> that I didn't even think about the honeycomb. So we got um, 
eighth inch cell, quarter inch cell, and both of those are in like the pen blank thickness, like seven eighths, and then a two inch thick quarter inch cell um, for like handle blanks and all that kind of stuff, stoppers. So those are all available on my website if you want to pick some of that up as well. And the blur pole is on there, the, the glitters, all those things. Go have a field day on my website. There's all kinds of fun stuff over there. So anyway, guys, I appreciate all the super chatters. Thank you guys for helping support the show and picking some really awesome colors. Thank you guys all for joining the fun today. And again, we're going to take next week off because I'm going to be working on mystery box number three. Um, I'm going to take that time. I also really need to catch up on uh, with that, that team color blank sale. I'm like scrambling to get things refilled. Um, so, you know, inventory. So I'm going to take next week off from streams. We're not going to do live streams next week. Um, however, we are going to do one on Saturday. Okay, so this Saturday, yes, not next week, though. Um, we're going to be working on that mystery box thing for that during that time. So, yeah, the intergalactic blank. You, you know you guys want that. And the intergalactic blanks, they got the regular standard 5-inch length and also an 8.5-inch length in those. So um, we got a couple different things there. It should be fun. So anyway, like I said, next week, but we'll have to wait and see how these things turn out. I'll turn one up on Saturday, and it should be pretty fun. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great evening. Thanks for joining the fun tonight, and I will see you guys hopefully on Saturday at noon Pacific time, and we'll turn one of these guys up. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you in the next one.